everyone, I'm Oni and I'm your storyteller for the classic tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They live in their market in a sandbank underneath the root of a really big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning. You may go into the fields or down the land, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now, learn to learn and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then, old Mrs. Slabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of ball blade and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to get her back bullies. But Peter, who was really naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some lettuces. And then, feeling lettuce sick, he went to look for some parsley. But loud the end of a cucumber flame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and learned after Peter, waving a leg and calling out, Stop thief! Peter was most deadly frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he learned on four legs and went faster so that he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got carved by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with large buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself our fullers and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some fellow's fellows who flew to him in glad excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a safe which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter would go out just in the time, leaving his jacket behind him. Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. But Mr. McGregor burst after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three pens. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to this. He was out of bleed and trembling with flight, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was really dumb from sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about going lefty lefty, not really first and looking all around. He fired dog in the world, but it was dark and there was no room for a fat little lapid to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stern doorstep, calling peas and beans to her family in the wood. Teacher asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she had could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way that across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Pleasantly, he came to a point where Mr. McLeaguer filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cat from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. 
He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hole. Splish, splash, splash, splash. Peter scattered underneath the bushes, but pleasantly, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McLeaker hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go, along a straight road behind some black land bushes. Mr. Mike Lager caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at large in the wood outside the garden. Mr. Mike Lager hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a Scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his courses. It was the sacred little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in the fortnight. Peter was not well well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime, but Fopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and bag bullies for supper. That's how the story ends. Bye!